Hi, I'm Stuart from Hike Micro. The NGO have asked me to take a look at this range of thermal monoculars and our thermal rifle scope. We're going to take a look at what the statistics mean and how that affects the image that you see through the device and all the uses that you can use them for. So the first thing we're going to look at is a basic overview of how thermal technology works. It's actually measuring the infrared that's emitted from anything that's hot. So whether it's something like a block of ice or a living animal or a tree, everything has its own heat signature that's emitted. You'll notice the lens at the front is reflective. So that's actually filtering out all of the visible light spectrum and any other wavelengths that we don't want to reach the sensor. The front lens is made of germanium, which is a naturally found element. It's really expensive to produce and it's why it's a big part of the overall cost of the unit. So you'll see the units which use a smaller front lens are built to a lower price. The more expensive units will use a bigger lens. It also helps with the detection distance, the bigger the lens, and it also affects your focal length and the overall magnification. So it's a really important part of the thermal and it's a big part of the cost. So this model is fitted with a focus ring around the front of the lens. So that's allowing you to control the image and get a really clear picture back through the unit. You tend to find that on more expensive models with higher magnification. Some of the entry level models where you've got a wider field of view, the focus isn't quite so important, it's not so critical. Where you've got a tighter field of view, more magnification, you need the control of the image to be able to see stuff which is at longer distances. Coming back from that, you've got the thermal sensor. Hike actually manufacture their own sensors which gives them complete control over the entire process. There's several statistics and numbers which are tied up around the sensor which we'll try and explain to you now. So the first statistic and the easiest one to understand is the resolution. So that's the number of pixels in your sensor. So the common ones would be 640 by 512 which is a high spec sensor. You've then got a 384 by 288 sensor. That's probably the most commonly used. And then we actually use in Hike some smaller resolution sensors and that helps to reduce the cost. Um, but you do notice the difference, really that's, that's affecting the detail, the level of detail in the image. The next statistic we're going to look at is the pixel pitch. And that's basically how closely spaced the pixels are on the chip. So the two common ones are 17 micron and 12 micron. Now, as all the system builds the picture that you see at the back, the pixel pitch also affects things like the magnification, the chip size, along with the resolution. All those things add together to give you a magnification. So at the base level, what you find is a 12 micron sensor tends to give you extra magnification, but will also lose a little bit of the detail. The 17 micron will give you more detail, but it requires a better optical system to get your magnification. So quite often the entry level units will use a 12 micron sensor because it's cheaper to produce and the 17 micron would be used in a premium model, but that's not always the case and people kind of pick and choose depending on what they're trying to achieve with the magnification and overall performance for the unit. The other big statistic that people are starting to pay attention to is the net D. And that's basically how small the temperature difference is that your sensor can detect from one object next to another or one pixel next to another. The smaller that number, the smaller the temperature difference it can detect and the more accurate your image is going to be. So a common net D maybe a year ago, two years ago was 50. That's dropped to 40. This unit has a net D sub 35 millikelvins and you're starting to see units now appear at sub 25 at the real premium models. So where you see that difference is on a wet day where everything's either cold or wet and there's a very small temperature difference or on a hot day if you've got a fox laying under a tree and the tree is really hot because it's been in the sun all day and the fox obviously is warm there's a very small temperature difference there some units might miss that or might make it less obvious the lower that net d value the more sensitive your sensor the smaller temperature difference it can detect, the more accurate your image is going to be, especially at the extremes of performance. The final consideration when looking at thermal monoculars is your screen here at the back. So the size of the eye box changes as you move from the entry level models up to the premium models. You also get higher resolution screens, larger screens in the more expensive premium units than you'd find in the entry level ones. Another key consideration when comparing thermal monoculars is the software that's built into the unit. Obviously, this, the readings from the sensor and how accurate that is, is part of the story for your image that you see in the viewfinder. The other part is how it actually interpolates that data from the sensor and builds it into an image. So at Hike, we have four color profiles that you can choose from, 
you've got white hot, which shows any the hottest points in white. You've then got black hot, which is a reverse of that. You then have fusion, which is very bright and colorful. You've also got red hot, which is white hot plus the hottest points marked with red. The Hike software has been developed for CCTV users all around the world. It's very, very accurate in the way that it takes the information from the sensor and builds it into the picture at the back of the screen. Um, you've also got several different modes that you can use to pull out less detail, more detail. You can adjust the brightness and contrast, manipulate that image to suit how you like to see your image, how you like to shoot. Another advantage with the Hike is the app, which has been developed to allow you to control the unit so you can change all your settings. It's actually easier to see the brightness and contrast change on your big screen on your phone than it is using the viewfinder in here sometimes, you know, to get that fine detail. Uh, if you've got a mate with you in the truck, he can also stream in, in real time what you're seeing in the viewfinder here. You can also take pictures, you can record a video. You know, it's a really powerful way to control your thermal monocular. Another consideration when comparing thermal monoculars is the warranty and backup service. Hike Micro actually have staff that are based in the UK who are able to offer support and turn around any issues that you've got very, very quickly. Um, every unit comes with a three-year warranty. Although, you know, we expect them to, to be able to go on being used much, much longer than that. Um, what you do see, though, is the technology develops very quickly as well. So, you know, what is cutting edge now and, and a premium model, I'm sure in, in five years' time will look very uh, out of date and probably people will want to update them. But the actual thermal sensor in this unit has a 10-year warranty, so Hike certainly expect them to carry on working for a long time. Um, this unit has an internal battery. The battery can be swapped out in the UK but it can also be run off of a USB um, power bank, which we're offering to all NGO members free of charge when they buy a Hike product. The units aren't designed to need regular servicing. It's a sealed unit. It's IP67 rated, so it's dustproof, it's waterproof, and can be submerged, I think, for 20 minutes, a distance of up to a metre. So if you drop it in a puddle, you're not going to have a problem. Obviously, designed to be used in the rain. It's designed to be used outdoors. It's not going to give you a problem. You know, really, the buttons on here are robust. Easy to, if you get it dirty, you wash it off, job done. The final specification that we're going to look at around the sensor is the magnification. And that's a combination of optical or base mag and your digital magnification. So the base mag is generated through the optical system and the sensor size and your pixel pitch, as we talked about earlier. And then you've got digital magnification on top of that, which basically is just stretching the image and making it bigger. So you, you see a loss of quality as you stretch the digital image, but it gives you a ch the ability to pull out some of the detail. So when it comes to a monocular, more mag isn't always better. So on the, some of the lower end units, and actually some of our most expensive units, you've actually got a very wide field of view, which makes it easy to quickly scan large areas. You can then, especially with the high resolution sensors, use your digital magnification to pull up the detail over longer distances. So our base unit has one times magnification, so you see a very wide field of view. If you're looking for a large animal at short range, then that's ideal. So for deer stalking, if you're going out during the day and you want to quickly know, is there something on the hill in front of me? That will, in seconds, you can quickly scan across that large area. And if there's a heat source, it's going to be immediately obvious because it's a large animal and it's just going to jump straight out at you. As you move up, the price range and, and if you're going foxing or you're using it for vermin control you want to be able to identify a smaller target over a longer distance you need more magnification at the base mag so our most popular model for that is our standard 35 millimeter model with a 384 sensor that's running somewhere close to three times magnification at base you've then got two times four times and eight times digital magnification but you will see that degradation of quality as you use all of that digital zoom. One of the myths about thermal technology is it doesn't work during the day or it's not useful. I think that's probably come from the fact that you go back 10 years, it was really expensive and the only people that would invest were people who were pest controlling professionally and they were doing that at night. Actually, a thermal is just as useful during the day and we sell loads of units to people who want to go deer stalking and quickly identify large heat sources. We're actually seeing loads of interest, not just from a hunting and shooting perspective, but there's lots of people in nature and conservation who want to use them to identify birds in trees or to find other small animals who might be difficult to spot. You know, nature is obviously, you know, a deer is the same colour as its background. 
a bird in a tree is actually really hard to find. A thermal spotter only looks at the difference in temperature, so it's it pinpoints any heat source, and they're great if you're doing security, or if you're, you know, there's a million things that you can use them for. So that was our introduction to thermal technology. I hope you found it useful. Please check out the other videos in this series that we've produced for the NGO on monoculars, and there's another on rifle scopes. Thanks a lot for watching.